Recently, we uploaded our must-have running shoes of 2023, and it seemed to go down really well. Now, if you watched it, you would have noticed that it was all about the exciting new road running offerings that are gonna be hitting the shelves soon, and there wasn't a pair of trail running shoes in sight. Now, very similar to the road running market, there's also lots of developments being made in the trail running world as well, and it looks like we've got some awesome new models and updates heading our way soon. So let's dive into the video find out a bit more information about all the new exciting shiny new trail running shoes that are releasing this year Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is fit and well out there and training hard and thanks for joining us for another video. So today we're discussing all the exciting new trail running shoes coming out in 2023 and actually just recently we've ran in quite a few new trail shoes on the channel. So uh, I did my first impressions on Ultra's new Lone Peak 7, also the very popular Hoka Mafati Speed 4s and then just the other day I took out Innovate's new Trail Fly G270 V2s for their first run. Now, if you haven't seen any of those videos, what I'll do is I'll leave a link for them all in the description below so you can check them out. Right, back to today's video, and it looks like all the brands have been working really hard behind the scenes on their trail running shoe lineups, but it also looks like the world of road running continues to cross over into that trail running environment. So, uh, there is lots of carbon featured in this video and we got some deeply cushioned, deep stacked midsoles as well. And I'm still not fully convinced that this is the way we should be going when it comes to the trail running market. But those deeply cushioned carbon plated trail shoes must be selling or else the brands wouldn't be making them. So first up is an update from long distance trail running favourites and headline sponsor of UTMB last year, Hoka. And it is their Tecton X2. Now I haven't actually ran in this model of Hoka shoe before because I was put off by the lack of lug on the outsole but I did hear lots of positive feedback about the performance of the previous version. Also worked into that midsole is Hoka's full length carbon plate to give you good levels of forward propulsion but also underfoot protection and then last but not least you get a full Vibram Mega Grip light base outsole to give you good levels of sort of grip when you're running in rocky or wet rocky areas. Unfortunately still not the most aggressive of lug pans so this is definitely not a shoe that could be used all year round running in the UK because I think you would just fall over in the mud but the Tecton X2 is due for release April this year and it's going to retail for around about $225. Next up is a shoe that's actually just arrived at Run For Adventure HQ and it actually turned up in the post this morning and it is Sockney's latest version of their very popular Peregrine, the Peregrine 13, looking all all new and shiny in this very nice colorway. Although you probably know what I'm gonna say, it's not gonna stay this color for long running here in the UK. There's actually three versions of this shoe hitting the shelves this year. So you've got this one, the standard version that we're gonna be testing. You've also got a waterproof option, the GTX, and there is a, a bigger lugged soft ground version, the Peregrine ST. Updates to the shoe include a redesigned upper and a redesigned midsole, and you now get a deeper stack height of cushioning. So Sockney have added 1.5 mil when it comes to that cushioning in the midsole. So you now get a stack height on the heel of 28 mil and 24 mil under your forefoot. So it still runs on a four mil drop. Happy to say you've got that brilliant flexible rock plate still worked into that midsole under your forefoot to give you good levels of underfoot protection when you're running on rocky sections. And you also still get that very consistent five mil lugged aggressive power track outsole. And I almost forgot to mention, even though they've added 1.5 mil of cushioning, this is the lightest Peregrine to date, weighing in at a very light 260 grams in a UK 8.5 men's. Uh, like I said, it has literally just released here in the UK and you can pick a pair up for 130 pounds, but keep your eyes peeled because we'll have our first impressions video on the channel soon. Shoe number three is from New Balance and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I have never run in a trail running shoe from the New Balance brand. Uh, this isn't our choice, I've just 
Never bought one or never run in one, but I have tested out quite a few of their road running shoes on the channel and I've become a big fan of their fuel cell compound. So when I saw that they're gonna be releasing the Super Comp fuel cell trail running shoe that has a deeply cushioned fuel cell midsole, I thought this is definitely a trail running shoe that I wanna test out in 2023. The midsole is actually a dual density construction, which I personally think makes the shoe even better. So that top layer of fuel cell is very soft, very plush to give you good levels of comfort, but then that bottom layer is slightly denser, so it should remain nice and stable when you're running on uneven ground. And it's also gonna provide you with some underfoot protection. It runs off a 10 mil heel offset, so you get a 31 mil stack height on the heel and 21 mil under your forefoot and also worked into that midsole construction, you've guessed it, it is New Balance's trail-focused Energy Arc split carbon fiber plate. Uh, New Balance claim that this is gonna give you good levels of forward propulsion, so the shoe should feel nice and efficient, but the design of the plate should also allow it to adapt and to adjust when you're running on uneven trails. Not the most aggressive of lug patterns on the outsole, but it is clad in the super sticky Vibram Mega Grip light base compound. This rubber is being used more and more on trail shoes these days because it gives you those great grippy properties, but it also saves on weight. And that helps bring this shoe in at a very reasonable 269 grams in a men's UK 8.5, which is a great weight for a shoe with so much cushioning in the midsole. Uh, the shoe's due for release mid-2023. Unfortunately, there isn't a price point at the moment, but I can't imagine it's gonna be cheap, especially with the dreaded carbon plate being mentioned. I think it's gonna probably retail for around about 200 pounds here in the UK. So even though it is an expensive trail running shoe, I'm still gonna try and get my hands on a pair and test them out on the channel. We've got quite a few new offerings and updates this year from Nike Trail. Now, if you've watched the channel for any period of time, you'll know that I'm not maybe the biggest fan of Nike's trail running shoes because whenever they bring a new model out they always wax lyrical about it's gonna give you great performance all year round on all terrain and in all weather conditions and then you hear a bit of mud or wet rock here in the UK and you slip and slide all over the place so it has been really frustrating testing out their trail shoes over the last few years but I still live in hope so could the Nike Zoom X Ultrafly trail be the trail running shoe that changes all of this uh, if I'm honest I'm not sure it will be, but credit where credit's due. When it comes to design and styling, Nike know how to make a very cool looking shoe. And the new Ultrafly Trail looks awesome. Although it is, in a very light colorway, so I don't think it's gonna stay good looking for long. You get a full Zoom X compound midsole, and here we go again, housed within that midsole construction is a full length carbon fiber plate. So you can see what I meant at the beginning of the video, how road running development is crossing over into the trail running world more and more these days. So it is a very similar setup to what you'd get on their Go Faster Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 road running shoe. On the outsole, we've got a three to four mil lug depth, so not the most aggressive in the world, but those lugs do look nice and chunky, so the levels of traction should be good. Not sure what rubber compound Nike have used on the bottom of the shoe, but hopefully it's one that will actually stick to wet rock this time round, so that you don't have to tread super carefully when you're in that type of environment. Uh, to be fair to the Nike brand, when we tested out the Zoom Exagamma, uh, the levels of grip and traction on that outsole weren't bad, and I think it's one of their better efforts. Uh, when it comes to the upper construction, it looks pretty stripped back, and Nike have opted to use a vapor weave fabric. So it should be super lightweight, highly breathable, but it's not gonna offer your feet a lot of protection if you're running on sort of more rocky or technical trails. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot more information than this because Nike are keeping their cards close to their chest with this one as they do. So no release date, no price point, but I should imagine you're probably not gonna get a lot of change from 180 to 200 pounds, especially with a full length carbon plate and a Zoom X midsole. Now, I would be lying if I said the Ultrafly Trail didn't excite me. You know, this shoe looks great and uh, I'm definitely gonna be getting hold of a pair and testing it out on the channel. That is, if we can get them, because you know what it's like when Nike release these hype shoes. They're really hard to get hold of. And I've got 
all my toes and all my fingers crossed, hoping that this isn't gonna be another trail running letdown from the Nike brand. Now, I mentioned it back at the beginning of this video, how those deeply cushioned road running midsoles are crossing over into the trail running world more and more these days. And the midsole on this shoe is definitely one of them. So you get a stack height of 38 mil under your forefoot, and wait for it, a massive 43 mil on the heel. And this has to be one of the most crazy, deepest cushion trail running shoes out there. And believe it or not, ASICs have added five to six mil of cushioning. When you compare it to the already deeply cushioned original version of this shoe, the Traboco Max V2 runs off a five mil heel offset and the cushioning in that midsole is ASICs Blast Plus. Uh, they've used a wider platform this time round and they've put in higher side stabilizing walls, which I definitely think is a good thing because when you're running on that deep stack of soft cushioning, especially on uneven ground, I think you're gonna need all the stabilization you can possibly get because I think it might be a little bit sketchy and quite unstable. Glad to see that they are still using that super sticky ASICS grip rubber on the outsole. So grip and traction should be pretty good. Weight wise, it weighs in at 320 grams in a men's UK 8.5. So not the lightest trail running shoe, but still a pretty good weight considering the gigantic size of that midsole. Uh, the shoe is due to release any day now and in fact when this video goes live it might have already released and it's going to retail in the uk for around about 155 pounds so the last new trail running offering in 2023 to catch my eye is actually a complete reworking of the vective trail running series from the north face in particular their new summit vective pro so the North Face were one of the first trail running brands to sort of jump on that carbon plated bandwagon with their very much hyped flight Vectives. Uh, we actually tested a pair at the channel and the shoe was all right, it was okay, but I think the plate in the midsole was a little bit stiff and a little bit rigid and it definitely affected the performance in a negative way and that outsole lacked a bit of traction here in the UK. And I was actually a bigger fan of the non-carbon plated version, the Vective Infinite, when we tested it out on the channel. The biggest changes come in the shape of a reworked midsole, so you get a much deeper stack height of cushioning this time round. And the North Face have chosen to use Piba foam. Now this foam isn't used in the trail running shoe world that often, so it's gonna be really interesting to see how it performs in the trail environment. You've got a six mil offset, so you get a 32 mil stack height under your heel and 26 mil under your forefoot. Housed within that midsole construction is a completely reworked Vective 2.0 carbon fiber plate. This has had a big update, so fingers crossed that it's gonna perform better than the carbon plate in the original shoe. Weight wise, comes in at 287 grams in a men's UK 8.5. So a reasonable weight for a trail running shoe. And we actually saw a lot of the North Face athletes at UTMB last year running in a prototype version of this shoe. The new Vective lineup has just been released. So hopefully we'll get our hands on a pair very soon. Unfortunately, it's not the most affordable trail running shoe in the world, as you can imagine with a carbon fiber plate. So it does retail for a hefty 225 pounds here in the UK. So I'm just hoping that the changes, the updates have made big improvements when it comes to sort of ground feel and stability when you're running on technical trails. There is a couple of more affordable shoes in the lineup. So you have the new uh, Vective Infinite 2 and you've got the Summit Vective. So there you have it. That is our top picks when it comes to all the exciting new trail running shoes that the brands are bringing out this year. Obviously, this is just a short video and we only have so much time and there's lots of brands and lots of shoes releasing. So uh, if you've seen anything out there that really excites you there's a shoe that you're dying to get your hands on get it on your feet and get out there running on the trails in well then let us know all about it in the comments below don't forget you can also follow us on our other social media platforms whether it be instagram facebook or strava and if you have enjoyed this video and you found it useful then why not smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already only takes a second to do and it is completely free but it is a big help while you're there don't forget to hit that bell icon because then you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. It's always appreciated. We'll be back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. The exciting new road running offerings that are gonna be hitting the shelves soon. Very similar to the road running market. There's also... <laughs> 
And it also looks like the road, the road of world running. <laughs> no, the world of road running, not the road of world running. This is Run For Adventure. Hope you are all fit and well and training hard and thanks for joining us with... <laughs>